What is hair? What is it made up of? And how strong is it? What about the fairy tale of Rapunzel? Could it have been possible? Hi, I'm Rhea, and I'm a material scientist. That means I study the structure and properties of both man-made and natural materials around us. When I first came to Ireland from South Africa, a lot of people were very curious about my hair. And as with a lot of African girls in the Western world, people would be like, your hair is so interesting. Can I touch it? But apart from its function, hair can also tell us a story about ethnic origin, age, and even affect how people think of us. People look at the texture and color of your hair and make judgments about you, such as, are you beautiful enough or do you look professional? But why do we have hair at all? Well, your hair protects you from the sun burning your scalp with its UV rays and during hot temperatures. Ah! But it also keeps your head warm at night and during the cooler seasons. The thickness and texture of our hair can be affected by what we eat. If we eat enough, our hair can be nice and thick. And if we don't eat enough, our hair can be thin and unhealthy and even fall out. So keep eating those fruit and veggies. Scientists can even say what medicine someone took by looking at their hair. Isn't that crazy? So naturally, as a scientist, I'm interested in what gives hair its texture, color, and shape as a material. Hair is what is known as a biomaterial. It is mostly made up of something called keratin, which is the same stuff in your nails and your pet's claws. Keratin is what gives hair its strength. All hair, whether straight, wavy, or kinky, has the same structure. A single strand of hair is made up of a long chain of keratin, making hair elastic and rigid. That also means hair is an incredibly strong material. But just how strong is it? Well, we all know the story of Rapunzel, who is locked in the tower. When the prince cries out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down, she throws her long golden locks all the way to the ground. And the story goes that the prince was able to climb all the way to Rapunzel using her very long hair. But isn't that make-believe? Well, with a few calculations, we can put it to the test. The average person has about 100,000 hairs on their head. We know that one strand of hair can support about 100 grams. That's a weight of an apple. If we multiply 100 grams by 100,000, we can work out that in principle, Rapunzel's hair could support about 10,000 kilograms. That's really heavy. Assuming that the prince was average weight, not only one prince could climb up Rapunzel's hair, but over a hundred could. However, there's one major problem. <laughs> Whilst Rapunzel's hair could support a hundred princes, the sheer force would rip the hair off her head. Now that's horrific. Don't try this at home. But why are there different types of hair? Hair grows from a tiny hole called a hair follicle. It is the size and shape of the follicle that determines the size and shape of your hair. Straight hair grows from a circular follicle compared to wavy and kinky hair where the follicle is more curvy in shape, making hair grow out in curls or tight coils. The color of our hair comes from a chemical called melanin. If your hair is darker, you have more melanin. If your hair is lighter, you have less melanin. But if nature and science decides on the function of our hair, who decides what hair is beautiful? What we find beautiful is based on our experiences of colors, symmetry, shapes, and patterns. It is also based on what we see around us, like what we watch on TV, and even the toys we play with, like dolls. But if we look close enough, we'll see beauty in all the differences. It is an important part of who you are. So say it out loud and say it proud. I love my hair.